everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be discussing B2B high ticket drop shipping. What is B2B? B2B, if you're not familiar with the term, means business to business, which basically means I am selling my products to another business for them to use. Um, and this is in contrast to B2C, which means business to consumer. And, uh, and consumer in this sense basically means an ordinary citizen. You know, I'd be buying something for my house. That would, that would I'd be a consumer in that situation. Um, quick life update before I get into it. Um, I'm gonna be running my first full marathon four weeks from tomorrow, March 16th. Um, it's going to be the Des Moines St. Patty's Marathon. So if any of you happen to be local to me, maybe you're running it yourselves, maybe you'll be downtown during that time. Um, I would love to meet you. Come say what's up if you happen to see me. I've never actually had the chance to meet any of my viewers or students in person. Um, but anyway, let's get into the meat of the matter, B2B versus B2C. I'm going to weigh some pros and cons of B2B. And to be clear, when I say B2B, I'm kind of lumping in B2G as well, uh, meaning business to government. So um, government agencies, including cities, public parks, etc. Um, so let's just consider that all under the umbrella of B2B. Um, and I think there's no right or wrong answer to whether you do B2B or B2C. I think the ideal case is actually a mix of the two. So if you end up with a niche where, where you know, half of your customer base is normal consumers and another half is uh, businesses, I think that is a really, really great place to be. And actually the store that I sold last summer was kind of in that realm as far as a customer demographic. And I, I revealed this niche in my course and the link to the course is in the description below. Uh, let's start with a pro of B2B. The first pro is bigger orders. Now businesses obviously have larger budgets and so they can tend to afford more expensive, larger things. Um, so that's that's kind of an obvious piece of it, but another piece of it is that oftentimes, depending on the product and depending on what the need and the project is, uh, a, a business might actually order more than one of, of something. So let's take, for example, um, you know, a nursing home ordering 10 bariatric lifts for their, their residents um, or, you know, a similar, a similar facility like that. Um, that's just a very arbitrary example, but obviously, uh, it, B to C, typically people ordering for their homes, they're only ordering one, maybe two of something. In B to B, it could be 10 of something, and that is obviously a much, much larger order and a much larger profit for you. Um, let's talk about a con of B to B. Uh, a con is that it narrows your scope of customers, and this is obvious, you know, you're cutting out um, normal consumers, normal day-to-day -day consumers, and only focusing on B to B. Um, this can be both, a, it's kind of a double-edged sword, both a pro and a con. Um, obviously, you, you can't really scale beyond the, the businesses that you are targeting, the business demographics that you're targeting. Uh, but, you know, if, if you are in a B2B niche and your website is set up and makes it clear that you specialize in these products for other businesses or government agencies, um, you know, that can help define for other businesses uh, that, that you are a good source to shop from. Um, and so I, I hope that explanation makes sense. It's kind of a double-edged sword. You're basically defining your customer demographic for your customer. Um, so kind of both a pro and a con as far as narrowing the scope of customers. Uh, let's talk about another pro. Uh, and this is something that I encountered with my niche all the time, uh, repeat customers. So, you know, in, in my situation, it was a lot of local contractors that would install these products for their local customers. And so over the course of time, I developed, you know, three to five repeat local contractors that gave me a lot of business over the, over the lifetime of the store that I ended up selling. Um, so not much else to really say about that. I, I think repeat customers are a lot more common in the situation of B2B versus B2C. Uh, let's talk about another con of B2B. Another con is that it it can require more effort on your part to move a sale forward. Uh, so what do I mean by this? Um, depending on the business buying from you, depending on their uh, procurement procedures, oftentimes you'll have to provide a little more paperwork. Sometimes they want to see a certificate of you know general liability insurance, which um, I had a, a client like that where it, I think it was an HOA 
and for whatever reason, they required to see that you had a certificate of insurance for general liability, even though this is drop shipping and I'm not actually interacting with the products, but it got me the sale. It cost me like 60 bucks to get uh, general liability insurance and uh, they ended up moving forward with me. Um, another way that it requires more effort is, you know, let's say it's a government agency. Um, in a past life, I sold uh, uh, software to government agencies and a very common practice, and this isn't unique to them, this is also in businesses for procurement, is they go through what's called an RFP process or request for proposal. And so I ended up in a lot of situations where they would reach out to me, um, you know, just call the, the number or email the, the email uh, that was on the website and they would ask for a quote on a specific product. And oftentimes uh, this was because they had to compare that quote along with two or three other quotes from other competitors or other vendors. And so um, that obviously takes a bit of back and forth. You have to prepare a quote for them. There are a lot of softwares that can do this very easily and look, make it look really nice and professional in Shopify. Um, but that's another element of it. Um, I think, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, the big bulk of, of what requires more effort. Um, sometimes it takes a bit of follow-up just to see like, hey, just wanted to call and, and see, um, you know, how things were going with, with this project. Um, you know, just wanted to see if, if you had a chance to compare all vendors' quotes at this point and if there was any clarity I could provide on, on what's on the quote um, or, you know, if this is a competitive situation, what can I do to make this more affordable for you? You know, something like that, something along those lines. Um, so again, it, it, it does often require a bit more effort on your part, but if it leads to a larger order, then it's obviously worth your time. Um, the last pro is I think B2B is generally, this isn't an absolute, but generally more sustainable over a long period of time than B2C. Um, I think that products that are used by businesses, you know, let's say, uh, car dealerships or uh, local contract, whatever, whatever the business might be, um, these aren't really trendy products. I, I think um, with B2C, there leaves a, a lot more room for trendy products like saunas, like cold plunges, um, like greenhouses even, and you know, all, all of which I've had experience uh, trying to sell. And, and I think with B2B, the products tend to, the need for the products tends to last longer in general than in B2C. Again, not an absolute, but just as a whole, I, I think it's, it's, it stands the test of time a bit more. So um, I, I hope that adds a bit of color. Again, there's no right or wrong answer whether you want to go B2B or B2C. Uh, I think one other point, and I've gotten this question many times, is how do I target businesses with my store or how do I target specifically this type of dem uh, customer demographic? The short answer is you can't really beyond choosing the niche itself. Um, so with, with my, I'll use my niche in particular as an example. Um, you know, ultimately with high ticket drop shipping, the way that I do it and the way that I teach it is you are advertising on Google to people that are typing in these keywords to shop for. And sometimes the majority of those people that are typing in those keywords to shop are businesses and in other situations, uh, it's, it's majority more just normal consumers. And, and so it really comes down to who, like, who is shopping the most for these products, and that's who ends up on your store. Um, there are ways that you can set up your store to be tailored towards B2B. You know, you can make the messaging on your store very clear that this is for other businesses. You can have a section for uh, commercial quote requests. Um, that's something that I think is really, really valuable to have on your site. Um, but you know, ultimately it's going to come down to who happens to shop the most for the products that you're selling. So with that, I, I think I'll wrap up this video. You know, let me know in the comments if there are any questions that were left unanswered on this topic. And as always, uh, leave comments or questions for future video ideas. But uh, until next time, thank you for watching.